next speaker showed great courage in refusing to fight the first Gulf War in 1990. Today he is the project director of Courage to Resist, a group dedicated to supporting GIs as conscientious objectors. Let's hear it for Jeff Patterson. Yeah, so 21 years ago, I was a Marine Corps Corporal, uh, field artillery, served in the Philippines, Korea, Okinawa. I did my four years, and then I was stop lost, meaning I couldn't leave the Marine Corps because we were about to invade Iraq. I realized that I was no longer a Marine by that time, and I didn't want to, as my commander told me, to uh, kill all the ragheads. I refused that order. And that's what he told, and that was the direct order. 21 years later, here I am. Um, project director of Courage to Resist. We're based out of Oakland, California. We've worked with about 200 service members from Iraq and Afghanistan that have refused to fight, who have applied for conscientious objection status, and who have spoken out against the wars that they fought. And uh, you heard from Eddie and Ethan earlier from Iraq Veterans Against the War. To do even that, to fight and then speak out, requires great courage. People who are speaking out today, after fighting, are risking being thrown out with a bad conduct discharge, are risking their benefits for speaking out and telling the truth. The last year of my life has been consumed defending one individual that is now facing life imprisonment for speaking the truth. His name is Bradley Manning. Thank you. Bradley is a 23-year-old Army intelligence analyst that has been incarcerated for 55 weeks now, and he has yet to go before a judge. Nobody has sentenced him uh, to any official crime. The local military authorities have simply typed on a piece of paper things that they believe he might have done, and he remains locked up in maximum confinement today based on simply the signature of a local army commander in Iraq. Wow. Bradley was subjected to torturous conditions at uh, the Quantico Marine Corps base for nearly a year. He was forced to endure ritualistic nudity. He was forced to remain inside and did not see the sun for months at a time. He had no social interaction. But because we were able to get a half a million people to sign petitions to actually confront President Obama in person during a fundraiser here in San Francisco, hundreds of people did civil disobedience in Virginia and are still facing prison time for that. We were able to change Bradley's conditions so for the first time he has now allowed visitors and he's allowed to receive mail and he's not being subjected to the same kind of torturous conditions and it's because people like you cared. Now we have some idea of what it's going to take to actually free Bradley. He is accused of releasing evidence of war crimes and no individual has been hurt by the evidence that he has given us and yet he faces life in prison and that is completely wrong. Some members of Congress are demanding that Bradley be executed, that WikiLeaks and Julian Assange be put on trial and there's a grand jury hearing going on right now. So I want to congratulate the Congresswoman for having the courage to resist all of those calls and to stand up for truth and peace and be with us here today and finally end these wars that, for me, have gone on for over two decades now. Thank you very much.